Hey guys, this is Kaijin Hunter, and welcome to part 1 of the Monster Hunter Bestiary version 2024. In this series, I'll be going over nearly 230 monsters that have appeared in the Monster Hunter mainline series. I wanted to make sure that this was uniquely something that I could do, and include something new for everyone from beginner to seasoned hunter. I will share with you the English and Japanese names, the official nicknames the monsters have in Japanese, which are sometimes but often not referenced in the English localization, and really help give you some insights as to how the development team is thinking about and positioning the monsters, as well as I'll give you a bonus fun fact for each one as well. I'll be going over the monsters by monster type, and in this video we'll be looking at the Brute Wyverns and Leviathans. When I say mainline games, I mean that I'll be excluding games like Monster Hunter Frontier and Monster Hunter Stories, which take place in their own respective universes. Without further ado, let's jump in. We'll be kicking things off with one of my favorite monster types, which is the Brute Wyverns, which in Japanese is Jurushu. It actually means Beast Wyvern, but because there's already a Beast Wyvern type, they call them Brute Wyverns, and I think you'll understand the concept once you see the art for all these monsters. As for the common characteristics of Brute Wyverns, you'll notice that one, they don't fly. <laughs> Um, they have very strong hind legs, which they often use to bulldoze and chase you down. They've got smaller, developed uh, front arms. Doesn't mean that they're useless, but they're smaller. And they generally have three different toes on each foot, but I'm not sure if that's a hard rule or just a more general tendency. Brute Wyverns first made their appearance in the third generation of games, so we'll be starting from there with Baroth, or in Japanese, Boruborosu. Its nickname is Dosharyu. Now, one note for all these monsters, but in Japanese, they always attach the wyvern word, which is ryu, uh, to the end of it. And I just want to note that it doesn't mean that they're all technically wyverns. It's kind of like just saying uh, monster. So this is like the earth and sand monster. But because it's Monster Hunter and that's just the naming convention, that's what they do. Anyways, this one is called the Dosharyu. And dosha, do meaning earth, and sha meaning sand, just comes together and makes it the earth and sand wyvern, which makes sense because it will play in the mud and the sand and will charge you down. The fun fact for these ones, and if you played Monster Hunter World, you definitely know this, but the favorite snack for a Baroth are ants. Mm mm mm, yummers. Coming up next is its subspecies called the Jade Baroth. You'll notice in Japanese, they don't actually use the names of the colors or the hues that capture the monster. They just put Ashu at the end of every name. So for Baroth, it's just Boroborosu Ashu, which just means Baroth subspecies. So it's a little special thing that we have in English that they don't have in Japanese uh, to sort of make up for the balance for the fact that we don't get these cool kanji based nicknames. For the Jade Baroth, uh, it's called Hyosairyu which is the Ice Crushing Wyvern, which of course is because the scene appears in the tundras and will basically just crush and plow you into ice. My fun fact for this one is that unlike the Baroth who likes to eat ants, the Jade Baroth's favorite food is something you can find in the tundra, which are Bunahabras. I hope I said that right. Next up is the flagship monster for Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, which is Brachidios. In Japanese, his name is pretty much identical, it's Brachidiosu, and his nickname is Saidu, which means the crushing wyvern. You might recognize that kanji from the last, uh, the ice crushing Baroth, but the Sai here is the kanji for to crush. The fun fact for this monster is the origins of its name, which is Brachium, which is Latin for arm, and Obsidian, because obviously it's got a very hard obsidian-like shell. Next one up is the Raging Brachidios. Now, this is considered a variant. It's not a subspecies and it's not a rare species. Uh, for these in Japanese, they do similar to what we do in English. They have a very descriptive and very colorful word that's placed before the name of the monster. For this one, it's Takeri Hazeru Brachidiosu, which translates roughly to Bursting Rage Brachidios. So the word raging, I think, captures it really well. And my fun fact for this monster actually applies to the original one as well, which is if you did not play the third generation in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, uh, the element of blast was actually called slime back then. 
I guess they probably didn't think that it would be a staple going forward in the series, and they wanted to make it really easy to understand because this was the only monster that had it, and it was the slime on its fist that would blow up and sort of become the blast element. Next up, one of my favorites, which is Devil Joe. Uh, I am using an older render because I don't like the world render here, uh, but his Japanese name is Ibiru Jo. Uh, for his nickname, it's Kyoboryu, which translates to Violent Wyvern. Um, if you can hear that correctly, yes, my fun fact is, of course, it's Japanese name, which is phonetically, literally, Evil Jaw, Ibiru Jo. Now, Jo doesn't really sound like Jo, like your jaw, um, but that's just the way that it's pronounced in Japanese. And it sounds really cool because it's not a word you wouldn't say jo uh, for your ago, your jaw, um, often in Japanese. So it sounds very fantastical and different uh, and very cool. But I can see why they went with Joe instead of devil jaw. While cool, it sounds a little adolescent. So uh, I'm actually pretty happy with the localization choice in this one. Next up, we have its variant, which is the savage devil Joe. In Japanese, they call it Ikari Kurao Ibiru Jo which I absolutely adore because Ikari means anger. Kurao is a very crude way of saying to be consumed or to consume. So this is the anger consumed Devil Joe. This thing ain't got no chill. He's upset. He's red. He's wild. And he's also one of my favorite monsters. My fun fact for them is this is something that's been really big in the community for the last year or two as people sort of uncovered it, but there was a long sort of rumor that it would consume its own severed tail. While I don't doubt that it would actually do that, like, in general, in the game, unfortunately, it does not. Uh, there was some videos that were kind of faked uh, and created a lot of uh, urban legend, uh, which is really fun. But unfortunately, he does not do that in the game, but that's not to say that a Devil Joe wouldn't eat its own tail. I kind of think that they would eat anything. Next up is the Drambaros. Uh, in Japanese, it's called Doboruberuku, and its nickname is the Tail Hammer Wyvern. Bitsuiryu. Uh, B means tail, and Tsui means hammer, which <laughs> is fitting because he does use his tail like a hammer and slams it down on you. My fun fact for Drambaros is the origin of its name, uh, which is Duro, which is hard. Yeah, ambulat, which is walk, and oros from mountain. Lots of Latin and Greek and words like that. So, uh, a very fitting name for the creature. Next, we have its subspecies, which in English is Rust Drambaros. Of course, in Japanese, they just put ashu, so it's Doboroberuku ashu. And its kanji for its nickname is the Bifuryu, which means the tail axe wyvern. So just swapping out the uh, hammer for an axe because this thing does slam it down in a little bit differently from the regular type. And the fun fact for this one actually comes from a localization blog, which is still up if you Google for it, uh, in which the localization head Andrew at the time uh, talked about some other names that were thrown around. Uh, and Red Cloak and Gritstone were one's possibilities, but I'm pretty happy they went with Rust. I like the idea that this thing may have just been there for a long time the old mountain uh, roaming around the forest. So yeah, good choice. Next up is everyone's favorite roly-poly, Uragan, or in Japanese, Uragankin. His nickname is Bakutsuiryu, the explosive hammer wyvern. Baku, which you'll notice a lot in these monster names, means to explode. And then Tsui, which you saw earlier, also means hammer. Fun fact for this monster, a lot of you probably know, but if you do knock it over, if you have a pickaxe on you, you can actually mine ore from its back, which I always thought was really cool. Then we have its subspecies, which is the Steel Uragan, or in Japanese, Uragankin Ashu, and the kanji for his nickname is Koltsuiryu, which means the Steel Hammer Wyvern, so just an Uragan that hits much harder. But what hits much harder is the truth behind its popularity. This poor sucker is the lowest rated subspecies when it comes to player polls for the entire series. Oof, indeed. In Monster Under Generations, it did get a Deviant, which is just a fancy category of variants. Uh, this one is called the Crystal Beard Uragan. In Japanese, they use the uh, appending word Takaramatoi, which is a very interesting <laughs> way to read that. Uh, which means the treasure-clad Uragon, or something that is covered in gemstones or treasures. Uh, and there is an in-game lore that says if you spot one, 
it will give you good fortune. So I guess all of you watching this video and not just listening to it are blessed with good fortune. Hopefully it comes true. Next up is Radoban, or in Japanese, Nadobarukin. Uh, his nickname is Kotsuiryu, which is the Bone Hammer Wyvern. See, you're already probably picking up on some of the repeating kanji uh, that come through some of these names. This one is probably obvious, but my fun fact is you are what you eat, and Radoban loves to snack on bones, which is perfect because it's found in the Rotten Veil, uh, which also explains why it has bones all over its body, thus making for lots of breakable parts and item drops. Thanks. Moving on to Iceborne, we have Banbaro, or in Japanese, Bafubaro. The nickname is the Mogyuryu, which means Mo is for aggressive or fierce. Gyu uh, could mean cow, but in this uh, actual reference it refers to buffalo and then wyvern. It was hard to come up with a fun fact for this monster besides the fact that it is just very fun to fight, um, but it is a vegan, uh, he only is an herbivore, and he appears quite literally everywhere, uh, to the point where it's kind of a running gag that every time they were showing off Iceborne on stage, that sometime during the presentation, a Bafubaro or Bambaro would join in and cause havoc. Next, we have Anjanath, which of course was our debut monster of Monster Hunter World. Uh, its Japanese name is very similar, Anjanafu. Um, its nickname, Bangakuryu, means Barbaric Jaw Wyvern, with Ban, uh, meaning sort of wild or barbaric, um, Gaku here referring to the jaw, and then Wyvern. Fun fact for this one is that it has a membrane that goes along its sort of tail fans, uh, if you spot, which helps with heat regulation because this thing does get pretty heated up and spews fireballs when enraged. In Iceborne, we were blessed with a subspecies for him called the Folger Anjanath, uh, which in Japanese is just Anjanafu Ashu. Um, and the kanji nickname for him is Daigakuryu, which means Thunder Jaw Wyvern. A fun fact for this one is that this sucker is actually two threat ranks above the normal species. Normally, it's not that crazy to have a subspecies be stronger than the original species, but this is quite a gap, um, and I think you probably felt it if you faced it in Iceborne. Next up is everyone's favorite from Monster Hunter Generations, which is Glavinus, or in Japanese, Dinobarudo. Its nickname is the Slashing Wyvern, Zandyu where zan means to cut or slice or slash, like with a sword, and yu. Fun fact for this is that at Tokyo Game Show 2015, uh, before the game was released, they had a demo in which you can face it either solo or in multiplayer, and no group during all of Tokyo Game Show 2015 managed to defeat it in multiplayer, although there were several people who cleared it solo. I think just because it has that erratic tail that can you know, sort of wipe out more than one person at once made it very hard for people going in without any prior knowledge to clear that fight. Um, <laughs> it's just really funny. He cleaned up house. In the follow-up Iceborn, we did get a subspecies, which is the Acidic Glavinus. In Japanese, just Dinobarudo Ashu. Kanji for his nickname is Duzanryu, which means Sulfur Slashing Wyvern. Uh, one note here, grammatically, I don't know whether it should be slashing or slash or cut. Um, it's just a name, so it can be either or. Uh, but they attach the word sulfur, where in English it's acidic. Fun fact, where the regular glavinus is based off of a greatsword, how it uses its tail, this one they based it off of a katana, so kind of a longsword. In Monster Generations, we did get a deviant for the monster called the Hellblade Glavinus. The descriptor they used for Japanese was Jin Mitsujin Dinobarudo. Jin Mitsujin meaning the scorched blade. Fun fact if you're looking for speedruns from Monster Hunter Generations and Generations Ultimate specifically, a Hellblade EX, which was the hardest quest for him, is definitely one of the most popular hunts uh, that was used in that title for speedruns. So look up your favorite weapon and Hellblade EX and you'll find some really interesting runs. Uh, in which people will play much better than I can. And while this won't be out until 2025, we did get the reveal as of making this video of a new brute wyvern in Monster Hunter Wild called the Kematrice. Uh, in Japanese, this is Kematorisu. And the nickname for this is Enbidu, which means the flame or flaming tail wyvern. 
We of course don't know much about this monster, so my fun fact here is that it uses its very long tail to sweep the ground and sort of cause friction to ignite oil and make lots of flames. The next is also from Monster Hunter Wilds and was recently announced, which is Rodon Popodo, which is an adorable name. In Japanese, it's, forgive me if I say this wrong because it's very hard to say, is Pupuroporu. <laughs> Pupuroporu. Um, its nickname is the Shoufundu, which means the Swamp Spout Wyvern. First kanji here, Shou meaning swamp, and Fun meaning to erupt or to spout out like water. And it does, well, of course, like to stick its tail in the ground, uh, its stinger, and then eject gas into the ground, which causes it to explode. Alright, thanks for making it to the midway point. We just got done with the Brute Wyverns, and now it's time to check out the Leviathans which I know is a very popular monster type. Uh, this in Japanese is called the Kaidyushu. Kaidyu, Kai meaning uh, sea or ocean, and you mean wyvern. If I were to nail down the characteristics of it, I would say one, think, fly, sky, but swim. Uh, these things are the kings of the ocean, of the water, where you have you know, monsters that fly and are kings of the skies. These things are unmatched when it comes to the water, ice, magma, wherever it might be. They all have serpentine-like bodies, and honestly, they're all just pretty gorgeous. Interesting enough, Leviathans also made their debut in the third generation of Monster Hunter games. Starting up, we have Agnactor, which in Japanese is Agunakutoru. Its nickname, Enkaryu, Enka means En for fire, Ka is the kanji for pike or sort of halberd, uh, and Wyvern. And it makes a lot of sense, and I think they even reference this in the description for the monster, the Fire Pike Wyvern. Uh, it's because it does use its body, and especially its nose, uh, to sort of stab at you like a pike. The fun fact here is you may as well call this thing the Mind's Eye Tutorial Monster, because when this thing becomes uh, hardened from all the molten lava on it, and it becomes sort of like a very dark color, um, it's armored state, the head, almost everything bounces off because only 15% of your damage will actually get through. So yeah, my memories of this monster is, man, that thing is hard, literally. It also has a subspecies. I will note here that I think the render I'm using here is actually the hardcore one from Frontier. It's just I couldn't find a good render for the subspecies, and this is close enough in appearance. But in the game, he's a little bit more bluish uh, than whitish. Uh, but I just wanted to note that. But this is the Glacial Agnactor. Uh, if you played Lance Main in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, no doubt you know this monster well because it was arguably the best set for that weapon. Uh, it's named in Japanese, just Agunakutoru Ashu. And its nickname just replaces the fire for frozen, so Tokaryu, which means the Frozen Pike Wyvern. Unlike the original species, uh, for this one, the chest is always soft. Um, so you can always just get right up in there and just poke him to death, especially if you're lancing. The next one is a monster I really hope we get back in Monster Hunter Wilds, which is Gobel, or Gobel, depending on how you want to pronounce it. In Japanese, it's got a very cute name, which is Chanagaburu, and its nickname, Togyoru, means the Lanternfish Wyvern. Fun fact, this thing loves froggies. It loves to eat them. So at the very start of the quest, if you had a frog, you could actually fish it out of the water and start with a large down, which I always thought was really cool. Next up is everyone's favorite flagship from the third generation, which is Lagiacrus, or Lagiacris, or however you want to pronounce it. Uh, in Japanese, it's Lagiacrus. And its nickname is very simple, it's just Kaidu, which means the sea wyvern or ocean wyvern. Do note that in Japanese we don't have a difference between an R and an L, um, so it's kind of hard to tell what it should be. I just put R in there just to remain consistent across the board. I'm always going to use R's um, when it comes to how I phonetically write out all the names in Japanese, but you could also consider them L's if you want. A fun fact, and probably a painful reminder for many of you, is that it was actually in a prototype build of Masuner World. There is footage out there of them showing it off, um, and that's where they discovered that with the engine and how they sort of made all the uh, curved surfaces in Monster World, that Leviathans were just not going to work with the technology, the amount of CPU compute that they would need to do in order to sort of do the detection of where the body was colliding with the ground just was not working. Um, hopefully they got that fixed now that we're seeing Leviathans pop up in uh, wilds. 
So I think everyone's expecting Laggy to come back either as uh, in the main roster or as a DLC fight. Laggy also has a subspecies which does swim but mostly is fought on land, which is the Ivory Lagiacrus. In Japanese, just Lagiacrusu Ashu. Its name is Hakukaidu, which just means the White Sea Wyvern. A fun fact for this one if you haven't played Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate is that the Moga Chief uh, Village Elder um, was actually in a rivalry with this monster. He'd constantly encounter it, fight it, uh, run away, it ran away, back and forth until they finally had a decisive battle and he got his butt kicked. And it hit him so hard that he ended up retiring and quitting hunting altogether. So, good job, Ivory. Next, we have one of my absolute favorites, which is the rare species, which is the Abyssal Lagia Cruz. In Japanese, when you have a rare species, instead of putting Ashu, which means subspecies, they just append Kishoshu, which means rare species at the end of the name. So it's just Dagiarukus Kishoshu. Um, the descriptor that they use for its nickname here is Meikaidu, which means the Abyss Sea Wyvern. And I'll just note here that the uh, Mei that's been here is also used for something like Meikai, where Kai is the kanji for world, which means the underworld. So the Abyss here also comes up with this like dark underground sort of feel, which I think is really cool and edgy. A fun fact, while not, I think, established as in-game lore, there is a backstory that Kaname, the director at the time, or the, the story director, uh, explained on it during a stage event that, at least in their eyes, this is not a different species of laggy. This is one that has just gotten so powerful and so old um, that it just grew really large and it just became very hard for itself to sustain uh, on the more shallow waters and so it had to go deep down into the abyss or the deep waters in order to find prey and that's where it's lurking and you have to fight it. Next is Nibble Snarf, one of my favorite names in English and also in Japanese it's Hapurupokka. <laughs> I often accidentally call that Hapurupokka but it's Hapurupokka. Its nickname Senkoryu means the lurking or underneath the ground mouth wyvern, which makes a lot of sense because it will sort of go under the sand and then come up with its jaw and try to swallow you whole. So of course my fun fact is that you can place a large barrel bomb, sort of lure it to come and try to pop out of the sand to swallow you and make it swallow the barrel bomb itself. I have a video of this up on my YouTube somewhere, uh, but then it will then blow up inside of its belly and you'll get a large down and I guess also a fun fact is you can also fish this monster out of the ground very much like you can fish uh, Gobel out of the water. The next one is Royal Ludroth. Uh, this is a very big male Ludroth. In Japanese it's just Roaru Dorosu. And the nickname is Suiju, which means water beast. Which leads to my fun fact, which is I think this is the only monster in the mainline series that doesn't have that du, the wyvern attached to the back end. Probably because it was already taken or something, um, but I just found it really interesting that this is like the one instance that you don't see it. It does have a subspecies called the Purple Ludroth, in Japanese just Roaru Dorosu Ashu, and its nickname is Shisuiju, which means the Purple Water Beast. And a reminder and fun fact here is that although it is a pinkish color, this is not a female. Uh, all the larger Ludroths are male, uh, so this is just a difference in uh, color. And of course, it does poison you, which explains the coloring as well. Next up, my favorite of the Faded Four from Monster Hunter Generations, which is Mizutsune. In Japanese, it's called Tamamitsune. And its nickname, Hokoryu, means the Bubble Fox Wyvern. Now, we know from the game that there's sort of a turf war between it and Zenogar, and that's kind of the theme of the Faded Four, is that they're gaining beef with the apex monsters of that region. Um, but their rivalry actually goes back even further. Apparently, the idea of having a monster based on a fox and having a monster based on a wolf were both valid uh, ideas that they had for Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, which was released only here in Japan. Uh, and ultimately, they sidelined the idea of a fox and chose the wolf one instead, and thus Zenogre was born. So this thing got sidelined so that Zenogre could take the spotlight, but then made a comeback uh, and I absolutely love this monster. In Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, we even got a rare species for it called the Violet Mizutsune. In Japanese, again, they're just using Kishoshu, uh, which means the rare species, so Tamamitsune Kishoshu. 
and its nickname is Senkoryu, which means the Flame Fox Wyvern. If you're into anime or manga or Japanese mythology, you'll probably notice a lot of, you know, foxes, fire, fox fire, and all that kind of stuff. And we'll see that theme play out in the monster after this. Uh, but my fun fact for the Violet Mizutsune is that I think this is the only case, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, of a monster that has a rare species but does not have a known subspecies yet in the game. Uh, so, fun fact, they got the special treatment. In Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, it also got a deviant, which is called the Soul Seer Mizutsune. In Japanese, the word that they use for Soul Seer is Tengan, so Tengan Tama Mitsune. Tengan meaning divine for ten, and Gan for eye, so the divine eye Mizutsune. And this goes into the lore of both the fox and also just Japanese folklore as well. The folklore one, which I didn't write on here, is actually Zatoichi. Um, there are some Japanese films based upon this idea of a blind samurai who can sort of has clairvoyance and can see things without having to actually see it so you get that kind of concept but we also continue the fox tradition in japan and the mythology they say that if a fox reaches a thousand years life or old that they will become a heavenly fox gaining clairvoyance or a divine uh form um so yeah divine ai mizutsune means that it's a very old uh battle-hearted mizutsune maybe not a thousand years though Moving to the 5th generation, we have Somnicanth, which was introduced in Monster Hunter Rise. Japanese name is Isone Mikuni. Very interesting name. Um, and its nickname, very easy to remember, Ningyoryu, which means the mermaid wyvern. Doesn't it look beautiful, just like a mermaid? <laughs> Fun fact, if you are not on Twitter slash X or whatever you want to call it, uh, or if you're just a newer fan of the franchise, but... Uh, during the development lead up and before the release of Monster Hunter Rise, they teased out this monster with a hand drawing from the director Ichinose. And this is what it looked like. Um, and they actually ended up having a funny joke where he put said that this is not a fried prawn because uh, ebi furai uh, is, is quite a popular food here in Japan. And it was really hard for people to come up with the idea of what the heck this thing was. But when they revealed it in the trailer, it made total sense. So. I don't know if this was Ichinose-san's actual drawing like his, by his own hand, but I think it's hilarious. In Sunbreak, we did get a subspecies for the monster called the Aurora Samnacanth, in Japanese, just Isone Mikuni Ashu. Uh, and its nickname, they just appended the ice to it, so we have the Hyo Ningyoru, which means the Ice Mermaid Wyvern. Fun fact for this one, the original Samnacanth was modeled after a mermaid, and for this one, the motif was that of a lorele or a siren, or some type of spirit that would lure uh, boatmen and fishers into the sea to kill them. So yeah, much more dangerous. Next up, one of my personal favorites, and I swear to GOG, it has really fudged drop rates for its rare gem, because they never drop, uh, which is Almadron. This in Japanese is Oromidoro, and its nickname, the Deoryu, kind of hard to say, uh, is the Muddy Old Man Wyvern. Uh, de here is just the kanji for mud. Uh, and then the next one, the O, is interesting because it does literally mean like a, uh, a venerable old man, uh, a sage, an elder. Um, so <laughs> if there's any question about um, this monster being an old man, well, there you go. Fun fact for this one, and this was through a interview that they did with uh, one of the sound directors or the sound team members. Uh, here in Japan, which they were talking about that sort of like shaky sound that you that sound effect you hear when it shakes its tail and They said that the Foley artist made it by Using a cat box. They said a pet Toilet which I would assume would be a cat box um, Filling it with water and then stepping in it with boots <laughs> So yeah, the Foley artist never you know uh, ceased to amaze me with their creativity in making sound effects in Sunbreak, we did also see a subspecies called the Magma Almadron, in Japanese, just Oromidoro Ashu, and its nickname Yooryu, which means the Molten Old Man Wyvern. Um, interesting fun fact about this one, while you'll notice a lot of monsters, the subspecies are bigger and stronger than the regular ones, this one is actually about 17 to 20% smaller than the regular ones. So when you first fought it, you probably went like, oh my gosh, it's a gold crown small, but nope. It's just a smaller, different monster, and they did that for gameplay variation, and I think it worked really well. 
Then of course, at the time of making this video, at the end of October in 2024, we do have from Wilds, which is releasing next year, the Balahara, um, Balahara, whoever they're going to pronounce that in the game. Uh, in Japanese, it's very similar. It's Badahara. Uh, and this is the Saikaidu, which means the Sand Sea Wyvern. Uh, the first one, the Sa here, just referring to sand. And Kai, which you saw from like the Lagia Cruz with just the Sea Wyvern. Uh, Kai, meaning the Sand Sea or the Sea of Sands. Because the game's not out yet, it's kind of hard to come up with a fun fact, but I did find out that the tripartite uh, sort of triple like jaw, like the three tongues and the jaw splitting into three different ways, uh, is not just a sci-fi thing. Uh, apparently deep sea creatures do have this, so it's a real world thing that does exist. Uh, I'm more curious to find out what the heck that emitting blue light inside of its body is. Will we ever know? Who knows? And the very last mainline Monster Hunter series Leviathan, at least at the time of making this video, is the apex of the second area in Monster Hunter Wilds, which is the Ustuna, or in Japanese, the Ustuna. Um, its nickname, Hagoromoru, means the Wave Dress Wyvern. Um, ha here referring to wave, and Goromo or Koromo referring to a dress or clothing or silky dress, something like that. I guess for the fun fact for this one, this is my favorite monster revealed so far. Um, outside of maybe uh, the new sort of squid-like uh, octopus until we get more information, I can't say for sure, but I absolutely love Ulthuna living its best life, doing belly flops for days and interacting with the environment in some really cool ways. So I can't wait to face this monster and its outfit is gorgeous. Anyways, that wraps up all of the Beast Wyverns and Leviathans in the mainline series for Monster Hunter. If I missed any for any weird reason, let me know down in the comments below. This is just the first part of probably a five, maybe six part series uh, in which I'll be going through all the different monster types, uh, roughly keeping them to about the same length as this one, so about uh, 40 to 50 monsters. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because the final part like the Elder Dragons have like 48 or something type monsters and I don't want to split that into two different videos nor do I want these videos to be of varying different lengths. Uh, so I can still tweak this format so let me know what you liked and what you didn't like and if there's anything you want to see me do in part two as I shake things up. So I'll probably be releasing these maybe once every week or two. Um, so do let me know down. I do read your comments and the feedback and it's just fun to go back and revisit all these monsters uh, and try to find little fun facts for them. So hopefully you enjoyed uh, this video. Hope to see you guys soon. Until the next time, happy hunting.